Hello fellow photographers, Dan with On One here, and today I wanted to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the Super Select tool in PhotoRaw 2024.5. You've probably heard we've made some big improvements to it, and I really wanted to be able to show you exactly what the difference was between the current old tool and the new one in 2024.5. So I have a special development build installed right now where I actually have both tools and I can toggle between them so you guys can see the difference. So let's start off here with a landscape photo. I know many of us like to take landscapes, so let me show you how this will work. Over here in my tool well, I'm gonna grab the original Super Select tool and I'm going to mouse over my photo and you'll see what happens. It highlights the different regions that it understands. And that's really the way the old tool worked. It had to understand what it was. It needed to know that this was water. It needed to know that these were trees and this was a mountain, even though some of us would look at this and say, well, that's not really mountain, that's trees or that it's sky. Or when I mouse over the water, it picks up some of the rock. Well, that segmentation was kind of the first generation of automatic AI segmentation. It's gotten a lot better. Let me show you. So I'm going to switch over and I'm going to use the new version instead. When I mouse over the photo, you can see how it picks up the sky and it picks up the mountain and it picks up even individual trees if I wanted to. And if I wanted to select multiple trees, I can click multiple times or I can drag a box around them. But what I really wanted to show you guys was the rocks. Remember how in the previous one, it kind of got most of the rocks, but it left a little bit of water in there. You'll see how now it picks up each individual rock separately and I can click multiple times to group those together. So let's say I wanna make a selection of all the rocks. I'm just gonna click on each rock and it will add it to my selection. It's crazy how precise it is. And then to add an adjustment, I can just right click and pick the kind of adjustment I wanna make. Let's say I wanna add a curves adjustment here. My goal is to really make those rocks pop a little bit more out of the water. So I'm gonna add a curve here. Let's go down to my curves filter. Let me roll this masking paint up so I have a little bit more room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my dropper tool. I'm gonna to grab a light tone in the rocks. I'll grab the dropper tool and I'm going to grab a darker tone in the rocks as well. And now I'm just going to make a contrast adjustment. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that darker point and I'm going to bring it up. That's going to lighten up those rocks, make them pop out a bit more in my scene. And then to recover the contrast, I'm just going to grab the upper point and I'll pull it up even higher. So that way it kind of creates that S curve back in the rocks. So even though I've lightened them, I've managed to increase their local contrast as well. Let me turn that curve on and off so you can see the difference before and after, just like that. Now that kind of precise adjustment would have been impossible with the previous tool, where now you can make those very precise burning and dodging and local adjustments with the new tool. Let me show you a couple more examples. Here's a simple ring shot from a wedding. I want to make the ring pop out more. So I'll grab the original tool and let's look what happens. Well, it classifies everything as people. It knows that these are people and the hand are people. They all get grouped together. I don't have the kind of precision that I need to be able to select smaller parts of the photo. But if I use the newer tool, watch what happens. Now, as I mouse over the photo, I can grab just the skin of the hand or just the diamond ring itself. I'm gonna click on that ring and I'm gonna right click and add a dynamic contrast. And I'll use a very strong option so it really pops out. And then let's make the hand a little bit softer. So now I can click on the hand, I'll right click, and I'll use a skin smoother. There we go. So now I was able to soften the hand and make the ring pop all just in two quick adjustments. Let me turn that on and off. There's before and after, just like that. Let me show you another. It's not just that you can pick smaller areas within a photo, the individual selections are higher quality as well. Let me show you the difference. Here's the original tool, and I'm just gonna select on the young lady in the foreground. You notice that when I select her, the outline's a little fuzzy. It kept, keeps a gap in here between her sweater and the bench. It missed a couple fingers in the bottom of her heel. I'm gonna make this really obvious. So I'm just gonna add a photo filter here, and let's add a heavy red cast. That way it's really obvious what we've done to the photo. Okay, so this one, is the original. I'm gonna name this layer original. Okay, let's do that same thing now. I'm gonna turn this guy off. We'll do it with the newer tool. Now you notice, now you notice with the new tool, I can actually pick even little sub components of her 
But what I want is to pick Oliver, so I'm just going to drag a box that covers Oliver here. Looks like I missed her toes. Let's go add those in. So I'm just going to click to add any little regions I missed. Let's right click and I'm going to add that same photo filter again. And again, I'll just make it really bright and obvious. And now let's look at the difference. So there's old versus new. It's a pretty big difference in just the quality of the mask that it generates. Now let me show you how you can take this tool and put it to practical use. So let's take a photo like this. I'll use the original version and again watch what happens. Because it only understands people rather than the subcomponents that make up a person, I really only have one choice. There's only one mask that it can create. That's not very useful a lot of the time. With the new version, I can select individual components within the photo. I could pick her skin or her shirt or the flowers. Let's say I want to take the shirt and I want to make it the same oatmeal color as her hat. Well, I can simply click on that shirt, right click, and I'll add an adjustment layer. Then with that adjustment layer, I can make the adjustments that are necessary. I can brighten it and warm it up and bring the saturation down so that I get a similar oatmeal tone in her sweater as to her hat. I could also use it to even change the color of the flowers if I wanted to. Let's say I'm going to add, oh, let's grab this, flowers. We're going to grab all the little pink flowers in her headpiece. And let's say we want to make them a blue that's closer to her eye color. I'll just right click. I'll add another adjustment. With this one, I'll use the paint with color option. Obviously, that's not the color we want. Let's use the dropper tool. We'll grab a blue out of her out of her eyes, and let's change our mode to replace color rather than solid paint. There we go. Now we've changed the color of all the pink flowers to match the same hue as her eyes. Let's take a look at a before and after. There's before, and there's after. This is all powered by the improvements to Super Select AI. It gives you much more precise selections and a lot more creative flexibility in working with your photos. We think it's going to be a game changer for your creativity. We can't wait for you to get your hands on it. There you go. Thanks for watching.